Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I want to do a brief look at the Stellarium application, which was mentioned, I think, in the live stream of last week. And um, I've been saving this one for a time I need an easy video because I have been uh, having to drive around a lot more, finding places to uh, to stay. And so, uh, hence, very late and um, a very simple video. But what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to use Stellarium, which is a free and open source application available. I believe it's available cross-platform. It should be in any one of your Linux distributions. And I just kind of want to show you how to use the application. It is very easy, but it is an unusual application. And there's no file menus and things like this. And you could boot it up and like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't know how to get out of here and things like that. And so I want to go ahead and talk about this. So um, obviously what we're looking at here is the night sky. We have our nice... Uh, Milky Way going through there and we have some nice horizon things. We can see a few things uh, like Vena, uh, Vega, Danab, and Altair, the part of the Summer Triangle are highlighted there. And uh, here is Saturn. We have a uh, uh, formal halt. I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, very odd. I used to work in a planetarium. Um, we have Jupiter, which is very bright in the night sky right now. Um, of course, internet, why did you do this? Um, or NASA, why did you do this? NASA actually asked the internet to name the probe they're sending to Uranus. Or is it Uranus? There is no good way to pronounce this planet. You're either peeing or something's coming out of rear orifices. And we're talking about naming a probe that goes to it and NASA actually asked the internet. Go figure. But anyway, I want to show you guys how to use the application. The one thing that you notice right off the top is we have a little panel up at the top right and we have a little panel at the bottom left. If you hover towards the bottom left, on the bottom there is a bunch of tools here and on the uh, on the sidebar there's a few more tools and then up here we have a few different options. And generally if you hover over anything it'll tell you briefly what it is. So the ocular view means if I want to look at Jupiter, for example, with a uh, ocular view like a telescope, I can do that. Now I have to select it first, so I'll click it without selecting it. See, please select an object. Go ahead and select Jupiter, and you can see we have our selection around it. And you would deselect something uh, by clicking it. I believe you click it. Okay, so you're going to click off of it into deep space and just click deep space a couple times. So you can see here's the planet. We can see a lot of things. These numbers are constantly moving because this application is actually moving with our system clock or per, per the other movement settings we have given it. I can go to any date, any time, in any place with this application and it will be surprisingly accurate. With that, though, selected, we can go ahead and do that. And you can see here we have um, uh, our ocular view. And then there's actually a plug-in, at least on my application here, that I can choose what telescopes and things that I'm looking at. Um, and then we have a uh, image sensor frame there. And then we have a, a Telrad site. And that doesn't zoom us back out. Let's just go ahead and zoom us back out a little bit there. And then the last one is going to be your settings for your oculars. So this determines your eyepiece. So we are at the this eyepiece here. So if I want to go to a different eyepiece, I could you know, grab a different one. Uh, here's your lenses that you have, various sensors, various telescopes. So you have a lot of different options that you have inside of here. Let me go ahead and zoom in with that one there. So you can see that we have um, uh, some different telescopes and things we're seeing. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at some of the other options. The panel at the bottom, these are some quick options. We can turn on or turn off the constellation lines, the, um, uh, uh, the titles, or the art. So if you want to see any of those while you're looking for your constellations, you can go ahead and turn those on or turn those off. We have uh, equatorial grids and azimuthal grids. So if you want to turn those on, so if you're doing calculations. And then the ground options, we can turn it on or off. And then we can set, um, uh, display your cardinal points here so you can see where our 
cardinal points are. And then we have our atmosphere. We can turn our atmosphere on or off. Atmosphere is useful for talking about light pollution, which there's another setting for light pollutions. Here's your planet labels, on or off. And we have deep sky objects. You can turn them on or off. Of course, deep sky objects you generally cannot see with the naked eye, so they are turned off by default. Uh, we can turn switch between your uh, different types of mounts, and we can center on selected objects, uh, which is the space button. We don't have anything selected, but if I go ahead and select something and hit this, it's going to go ahead and center it. All right, and then we have our night mode. This is a nice option for if you're outside with your computer and you want to uh, have a look at it. This is going to do a really good job of making sure you're not losing your night vision as you are uh, looking at everything. And then this is the full screen mode. Yay, we can go full screen or not. Uh, so that's this is why it likes loading in full screen so that uh, it will basically give you everything that you need. Um, just go ahead and deselect that guy there. And then here we have uh, your exoplanets. These are the various exoplanets. There's none right there. Let's see if we can find an exoplanet somewhere. I don't know where they are going to be. There are going to be planets that are out there. And then we can toggle meteor showers on or off. So this tells me that uh, at this point in time where I'm at, there might actually be a couple meteor showers. So if I want to go out into the night sky, of course, where I'm at right now is not too far from Seattle. And it is cloudy. All right. We have a dialogue to search. So if you are going to be searching for something, you can go ahead and um, do that. Where's that? I don't even know where, how in the world to use the search function. Uh, okay. So there's Leonids. They're going to tell us where things are at. Oh, okay. I, I see. I see. Uh, so what this guy's going to do, this is your meteor shower search explicitly. So we're kind of inside of our meteor shower stuff. So you can search from this year to this year, and then this is going to show us. So let's just go. Um, let's just go right now for um, our current date when I'm recording this, which is what date is it? I think it's the 28th, and we're going to go from the 28th on over to. Uh, let's just see what events might be going on in the next uh, next month or so. So we're going to go from September 28th to the end of October. And you can see that we have uh, daytime. Okay, it was generic. Okay, Geminoids, those should be um, visible. Rhinoids, Leonoids, Miners. Um, that's not the major one, but the minor one would be visible as well. So there are a few different events we can keep an eye out for. That search function is going to allow you to find them. And then here is satellite hints. So this should calculate where a lot of the satellites are so that uh, you can actually see, possibly see satellites if they're up there or not. Now this is where you can, uh, you can set a normal time rate. Uh, so this is going to follow your basic system clock. This is going to pause and not move at all. And then we can increase the speed, decrease the speed. And uh, this button here sets the time to right now. So if I went ahead and uh, if I went ahead and set some other time or date, I can click this button and it will automatically change the night sky to where we are. This is our exit button. No big deal. All right, so now let's go ahead and have a look at some other options on the uh, left over here. The location window, this is where you can set your specific location. So right now it's setting me somewhere over here. I'm actually closer to Seattle. So let me just go ahead with Seattle, United States. So we'll go ahead and do that. I could also come down here and just pull out my GPS and get my specific coordinates. And I could enter my coordinates in down here. Here's my elevation. And then uh, I can get the coordinates from a GPS. I don't have a GPS enabled on this device here. But we can actually go ahead and set different things. We can actually set our viewing from different places as well. Um, so if you want to do something like that, um, which, okay. Uh, let's go back to Earth, though, for now. For now. For now. We'll have to go to oh, Sartari later. And then you can set your time zone uh, to whatever you want your time zone to be. Uh, let's just go back and uh, reset our location back to Seattle. Though. 
Uh, if we, we go ahead and do that, it should reset everything right back if you mess something up. So that way we get a good, uh, a good idea to get back to where we are. Uh, the daytime, nighttime window, this will set our day and our time, and we can do our current date or we can do our Julian. Uh, so you can do either way that you want to set that. And then the sky and viewing options window is nice. This is to, to configure things. So one thing I want you to notice is, look, let's look at our summer triangle again, um, Vega, Altair, and Deneb. And uh, these are part of the, where is, where did my last star go? Did I lose a star in the summer triangle? It's going to be over here. Um, oh, it's it's right here. Um, so the labels are going to be set based on the intensity of the star. And so if I just slide this up a little bit, you'll see that Deneb is going to be uh, given there. If I turn these guys all the way on, it's going to name every single star, including the ones that still have numbers, which will be completely unusable. You can turn off all your star labels, sliding that down, or just hitting the off button or... What it's doing here is it's going to label mostly the stars you're going to see under high light pollution. Uh, these are going to be the stars that you're going to see uh, with labels. And then most of the other ones you will see if you are in a darker spot, but you're not going to see the rest of the time. Um, we can do perspective, stereographic, fisheye. I like the perspective most um, because it just kind of gives you a better idea of what it looks like from the ground level. You know, we don't see the ground like this. I like doing it like this because I might be taking the computer out and looking at it and seeing, you know, what the scar, uh, star is looking like. Here is our Milky Way saturation. We can turn it on. We can turn it off. And we can make it more or less intense depending on where you are. If you're in like Death Valley, you see it really well. If you are in the middle of a city like Seattle, you don't pretty much see it at all. So you can set all that based on what you want. And then um, here's, uh, of course, stars. We can turn the stars off if you want. Uh, we can twinkle the stars or not. There you go. There's, of course, our labels. And then we can use additional names as well. So these are the, your sky options. We also have um, solar system objects. So anything here is going to be on. Here's the trails. Um, if you want to show where things are kind of moving, there is uh, orbits. So this will show you the orbits of different uh, elements here. So this is Saturn's orbit. Uh, we have Jupiter's orbit. Of course, you can see it's doing all sorts of fun stuff because Jupiter likes to do that. There is um, uh, the internet uh, naming fun, uh, Uranus or Uranus, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And uh, and by the way, uh, for those like, it's pronounced this or that, I you know I used to work in a planetarium. <laughs> it's pronounced both ways. Um, I've actually heard it mostly Uranus, um, but the planetarium director where I worked uh, pronounced it Uranus. He might have done that just because of the vulgarity nature of Uranus. I don't know. Um, but regardless, it sounds like you're probing something, so whatever. Um, you can show orbitals of only major planets. You can show orbitals for only selected planets. You can do all those kinds of things there as well. Um, you can scale the moon, uh, which is not up right now. And I don't know where the sun is. I thought there's an option to turn on or turn off the sun inside of this. I know there used to be um, in here somewhere, and I thought it was in the solar system objects. I mean, the sun is indeed the center of our solar system. So uh, it, you'd imagine it should be there eventually. Um, and then deep space objects, these are the things that you would need a telescope for. So if you're looking for something in deep space, uh, you can go ahead and turn this on, and you can turn on the various deep space objects so you can spot them a little bit easier. Your markings, these are just, uh, of course, we already looked at a couple of the, the grids already, but this is way more grids. So if you want to have very specific grids, you know what you're looking at, then uh, you have the ability. Landscapes is nice um, because you can come over here and you can just kind of choose different landscapes depending on what you want. Um, so hurricane might be good because it's very close to where I'm at. Not hurricane the hurricane season going through Florida, but this is from uh, Mount Olympus over there, not too far from Seattle. So you can turn that on. You can go from the surface of Jupiter, surface of Mars. Here's Geneva. Uh, so you can see that uh, there's a lot of different uh, settings and places you can set up. You can just do basic trees. So if you are fighting with treescapes, this might help you find things 
a little bit better. Here's the surface of the sun. I'm not sure why you'd want to turn that on, but uh, okay, some people might. And then there's some star lore. Um, so this is just a little bit more information. Uh, of course, we already have the labels, constellation lines, and the um, uh, various art. Is, it should be here somewhere. Show art there. And then we can set the art brightness if you want to have art there but not be super bright. You can go ahead and do that. You can also change the line length as well. So if you want to set something bold uh, with just a little bit light constellation there so you can maybe get a little bit better idea of what you're looking at when you're up there, go ahead and change all those settings around as well. And then there's the surveys button, which sometimes is crashing my system, so I'm not going to click it. <laughs> I'm not even sure exactly what it's surveying. I'm guessing it might be going online, and I have a really weak internet connection right now. So uh, it is um, uh, it's probably just running into an issue of, uh, uh, of not being able to download stuff. Here's some various lore from uh, different nations as well. Babylonian lore, um, Aztec lore, Arabic lore. So there's a lot of information in here that I didn't realize was in here until I looked through every single menu to, to get up here. Um, but this is Stellarium. It is available on pretty much any Linux distribution. Uh, it's available, I believe, as a flat pack as well, I think. Uh, I installed it uh, just regular repository because that's the way I prefer to do things. And uh, it is also there is a Windows and a Mac version as well, to my understanding. So this is really good if you want a good star chart to throw on a small computer to sit outside and watch the stars and figure out what you're looking at. Uh, here's, of course, the Big Dipper over there. Uh, Big Dipper points up to the uh, North Star, which is going to be right there. And then this is into the Little Dipper. Boom, 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 boom. And then we should have Cassiopeia. So here's a fun way you can always find North. It's not the brightest star in the night sky, not even close. Um, but one of the two constellations, either the Big Dipper or Cassiopeia, being about 180 or so degrees, about 100, 100 um, I'd say probably 160 degrees apart, on the shortest angle, uh, one of those two is always up. And if you can spot those two constellations, they both point to the North Star. And then we can see some other stuff out there as well. There's our Summer Triangle as well. And a couple of the planets that are going to be visible right now. And if you want to look for those uh, meteor showers, you can do that. There's actually a setting in here somewhere where you can actually turn on the meteor showers a little bit more. Um, there's the sky viewing options, uh, search window. There's a configuration window. This might might have been it. Here's our time. Here's our tools. Yeah, somewhere in here you can actually set um, set a rate for um, meteor showers and things like that. So if you happen to want to see some meteor showers every once in a while show up, there's a setting in here to do that. I just can't remember exactly where it's at. Uh, let's see, there's configuration, there's a search window, here's your astronomical calculations. Oh, this might be where it's at. I uh, can't remember. But anyway, that is Stellarium. Hopefully this has been fun, beneficial, helpful, and uh, gives you uh, something to think about. With that, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.